how you doing how you doing it is your girl your diva in knowledge lady mocha representing mocha's ladies lounge hope everybody's doing great hope um everybody's going to have a pleasant and blessed new year coming in um regardless of whatever you had to go through in 2022 may the lord bring it upon you that you have a better new year coming up so whatever you've gone through it's already done leave it behind it's time to move forward the more positive and better things so anything that's been weighing you down anything that's been draining your spirit sis do not bring it in 2023 you're going to have to leave it right where it was do not bring it in do not bring it into the new year with you in 2023 so y'all moving right along i want to thank all of y'all i appreciate late appreciate y'all for um subscribing to the channel for y'all supporting the channel i appreciate the positive vibes um y'all been giving me a lot of good input on all of the videos that i've been uploading y'all been sending other people to me and again i appreciate it ladies i really do because we all can learn from one another and we all can build off of one another you feel me so we're going to go into this right away um if you have not been keeping up on my community tab i've already put the notification out there that i'm going to be doing the unhinged series anytime i do an unhinged series is most likely going to be in reference to um uh, somebody that is very psychotic narcissistic um dealing with individuals that have a really bad type of irrational and immoral behavior so nevertheless y'all um if y'all been keeping up um with the channel i've done a couple of videos on women who have basically um lost their freedom due to the fact that they had decided to take the lives of their companions their husbands who had decided to abandon them and move on and you know uh have relations with side chicks get involved with side chicks not respecting the fact that um the women who stood by them supported them during the duration of their success um not taking their feelings into consideration some of these men they become successful not only once they pockets start getting big so does their ego um so does their attitude in which they don't feel they have to um, continue to respect their vows all of a sudden they find all kind of faults in their marriage especially when they start going out here messing around with these other women that seem to be more adventurous because the other woman may be younger the other women may be more sexually adventurous whatever reasons they decide to not respect their vows does not justify their actions and some women can learn to take the L deal with the pain and over time they just try to do some self-healing they go through therapists or they just get support from their family and their friends and they just learn to deal with the hurt and the pain and the rejection while you have some women on the other hand which is the two that i did a story on uh my series on betty broderick and um carla harris that decided no i'm not going to deal with this heartache i'm not going to deal with this embarrassment i'm not going to deal with the shame i'm just going ahead going to go ahead and take you off this earth I'm going to make sure you meet your maker. That's what I'm going to do. You're not going to take away my dreams and shatter all of my hopes and everything I put into this marriage. And you decide you want to throw it away and just give it to another woman that took no part in your success. So women, all of us have our own way on how we deal with our pain and how we deal with our shame. So in that scenario, it was basically the wives who took matters in their own hands but what do you do when it's the side chick the appetizer you know the throwback thought the easy bake oven bitch i mean what what do you do when it's the side chick who decides they're going to be the ones to take a life and for the most part they normally don't go after the man they go to what they feel the man values the most which is his woman and i'm going to be doing a couple of series because there are different cases in which this has happened the case that i'm focusing on today 
is in reference to a woman by the name of Carla Hughes. Now, I've covered this story many times before. I find the story very fascinating, um, not because I get joy out of what these women do, but it just lets you know the psyche. It, it just amazes me, the psyche and, and the, their mental state of mind when they decide to take it to this extreme to get so angry where they decide okay i know what i'm going to do i'm gonna ruin his life by you know pow pow and his wife that's what i'm gonna do i'm 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 gonna take since he took me for granted i'm gonna take something away from him that means something to him so we're going to go into the psyche of that and we're going to analyze um, the mental and emotional um, factors that take place in which causes a woman to get to this point in which she's driven to feel this is what she has to do to get a point across. So for those of you who are not familiar with the Carly Huger story, um, there's plenty of documentaries. I wish they would have made this a movie. I would love to see a freaking movie on this, y'all. I think the movie would be phenomenal. And not only for entertainment purposes, but it would teach women a lesson. Like, you got to be careful. You know what I mean? It, it, it more so, not, not just women, but it would be a definitely learning lesson for men who think they're slick with their dick and figure that they got the best of both worlds and no matter what, they can do what they want to do and still go home and not have to pay any penalties you know for taking advantage of a woman that was lonely a woman who has already had past issues of rejection and men um mistaking her kindness for weakness um it's a lesson i think so many can learn from that we should just try to avoid even getting ourselves in these situations so i feel like side chicks can learn from this married women and the married men especially can learn from this type of situation so y'all this is a very interesting story. Um, I would say this happened back in um, 2006 of November. Now, it's, it's crazy. Why so much stuff got to happen in November? You know what I mean? Betty Broderick killed her husband November 7th. This woman decided to take the life of her um, man's fiance. That don't even sound right saying that, but that's what it is. Her man's, her man's, recorrection, her man's pregnant fiance. She decided to take this woman's life November 29th. So Carla Ann Hughes, born June 12th, 1981, y'all. So she has to be 41. I'm 43, so I got her by two years. So um, she's a former middle school teacher and she is the person liable responsible for the death um that occurred in jackson mississippi and she was convicted of two counts of capital murder for the november 29 2006 slaying of her lover's pregnant fiance avis banks and banks unborn child she is serving two consecutive life sentences without parole at the Central Mississippi Correctional Facility near Pearl, Mississippi. Y'all, if y'all hear a dog barking like he on fentanyl, I apologize, but that is my grand pup, Blue. My grand dog, Blue. And he is just really off the chain. I'm not, I guess the, the uh, trash men, he can hear them coming down the street, so he just loses his goddamn mind every time he hears a truck or something in I just cannot get him to humble himself. So I apologize if you hear my dog, my grand dog, Blue, barking in the background. I'm not murdering him. Nothing's happening to him. Don't go calling the animal shelter or Peter. He's just losing his goddamn mind because it's the trash man coming around to collect the trash. I don't know what's wrong with him. Pray for him, y'all. But anyway, so this story is very interesting. It's very interesting. Again, I want y'all to check out the documentary uh, it, it'll give you way more insight that I'm not going to be able to fit in a less than an hour content. So, um, let's get to the basics of this. Um, Avis Banks was described, this is the pregnant fiance who unfortunately um, was taken. Her life was, shut, her life was cut shortly based on a woman who could not handle her emotions and could not handle the rejection and she allowed 
one man to get her so infuriated um, with his selfishness that she took the life of another woman who had nothing to do with the man who betrayed her. So Avis Banks was described as a smart and beautiful person. She was the first person in her family to graduate from college. She loved working with kids and she got a job out of daycare in Ridgeland, Mississippi. She was in a relationship with a man named Keon Pittman, who was a teacher at Chaston Middle School. He also coached basketball. Avis and Kenyon were engaged and expecting their first child in 2006. They were planning to get married the following February. However, what Avis didn't know is Keon had a wandering eye and had a secret girlfriend. So, um, Carly, who just met Keon at Chaston, at Chaston, or Ch Chaston uh, Middle School, where she was a language arts teacher. They started a sexual relationship, even though she supposedly knew that he was engaged. She also claimed to know Avis was pregnant. <laughs> Already a red flag, honey. Once you know they're engaged and got a baby on the way, women do this shit all the time. They still deal with a man knowing he got a, a baby in the making and he's in a relationship. I don't get it, but yet they don't want a man who lives with his mama. Make that make sense. Carla and Kenyon, Carla and Keon would meet at Carla's house for hookups. And sometimes Carla would even come to Keon's, oh gosh, when Avis was not home, dummy. She also would pass notes to Keon at school and refer to him as her future husband. However, Keon basically said it was just sex and there was no future plans with her. Keon said that after he and Carla broke things off, she started stalking him and said that she would tell Avis about their affair. Four days after this alleged incident, Avis was killed. November 29, 2006, Avis returned home from work. It was reported that she usually got home around 3.30 to 4 p.m. Her routine was that when she got the mail and entered through the garage to get inside the house. Keon Pittman returned home and even though he didn't usually enter the garage to get inside, he opened the garage door and found Avis laying on the floor. She had been shot and stabbed and she had the mail and her car keys in her hand. She had multiple gunshot wounds and her throat had been slashed. Her pants was also pulled down a little, but the police ruled out sexual assault. The door had been kicked in, and it looked like the killer had to make the house look ransacked. The drawers in the master bedroom all had been opened. Um, Keon Pittman was brought in right away and apparently was wailing and making guttural noises, but not crying or showing much emotion. He was also talking to someone on the phone and referring to them as babe. They also brought Carly Hughes, Keon's girlfriend, in for questioning. At first, Carla denied her relationship with Keon and later said they did have a sexual relationship, but that was all it was. She also asked, um, she was also asked if she had a gun, and Carla denied it. Um, a few days later, a cousin of Carla's, of Carla's named Patrick, came forward and said that Carla had borrowed a 38 caliber five shot revolver from him. He said when she borrowed it, it had five bullets in it. When it was when it was returned, it was empty. He also said she borrowed a knife, but it was never returned. At first, Carla was charged as an accessory to the murder, but on December 8, 2006, she was charged with two counts of capital murder for the murder of Avis and her unborn baby. The trial began October 2009. The prosecutors believed the motive for murder was so Carla could finally be with Kenyon. There was a lot of evidence that showed that Carla was the murderer. The gun that Carla borrowed was confirmed to be the murder weapon. Her shoes were matched to be the shoes that left a mark on the door that was kicked in. And Carla had made some calls around 537, 604, and 605 that showed she was in the area of the murder scenes. Carla's in turn, Carla, I can't read y'all, Carla's. Attorneys blame it all on Keon. They said that Keon was a womanizer and didn't want to be tied down with the wife and the baby. Keon testified and said that Carla became a stalker after they ended their sexual relationship. And about how he was at basketball practice when Avis was murdered. October 13th, 2009, Ms. Hughes was found guilty on both counts of capital murder. She was sentenced to two consecutive life sentences in prison without parole. The latest, Keon Pittman went to marry someone else in 2008. And apparently, they had sent Carla a copy of his marriage certificate that was in jail to get her to turn on him. What? Now, I didn't even know that. Wow. 
Okay. Carly Hughes just still maintains her innocence and thinks someone framed her. <laughs> her request for a new trial was denied. I remember she did try to appeal several times and she could not get the appeal. I think she maxed them all out too, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, final thoughts. I believe Carla killed Avis, but I still think Keon was somehow involved. He seemed like he didn't give two shits about Avis and that she and his unborn child were killed. He supposedly cared about Avis and about Carla at one point and didn't show any emotion about what happened. I personally think Carla and Keon planted together or that Keon said something went about wanting to be with Carla or not wanting to be, with fa be a father and Carla killed for him. That's just too much evidence for me to believe Carla is innocent and not enough evidence for them to arrest Keon. Now that's somebody else's personal philosophy as far as what they believe personally happened. I don't believe that, but I will give my own perspective as this content continues. So nevertheless, y'all, I had to do a lot of reading because everybody does not know about this case. So basically, we know the basics. Um, they started having an affair, working at the same middle school, faculty, you know how they be having these meetings, these employee lunches, things got deep, things got heavy. And um, basically, Keon, was being your average nigga. Thinking about himself, thinking about his dick. He really did not care about neither one of them. Let's be frank. Most of the time when these men step out of their, in their relationship and marry or not, cause I'm tired of side chicks thinking they can give a pass. Even if a man was not married, if he is in a relationship with a woman, especially if they're living together, and even worst case scenario, there's a child on the way, evidently, it's more serious than what he's telling you, you know? So this is the worst situation any woman get, get herself into. Don't think because a man is not married that you're safe. You know, um, you don't know what kind of plans these man, men have. They could be planning on getting married or they could be engaged to be married. So don't think because they're not officially married that you're in the safety zone because that's not always the case. So any hill, um, Keon started noticing that Carla was becoming more and more obsessed, more demanding. And see, one thing about it, when you're being a male gigolo, a male Jezebel, sometimes it becomes overwhelming trying to please two women at once. Because women, we can be very demanding. At home, we bitching about, I need you to take the trash out. We got to pay the bills. We got to prepare for the baby. You know, it's already responsibility just having a woman at home. And then when you have a woman uh, trying to have an ongoing relationship outside, you know, because even though it's a fling, it was still a relationship. On top of that, ha having an ongoing relationship outside of the household, that's a whole nother woman you got to appease to and you got to accommodate. You got to please both of these women sexually financially emotionally and at some point something gonna have to give you cannot keep up with the charades um especially when things start changing for keon it was one thing when avis was just pregnant with the child or before she got pregnant it was a different story the it was a different dynamic when he chose to have an affair with carla but once he got closer to having his first child with Avis that is when he started trying to bow down bow away from Carla who at this point in time had already invested a lot of feelings not only that she invested her body her time and you know when you be sleeping with these men especially when you sleep with them a lot uh you could become sexually dependent upon them, you know, especially if they're putting it down really well and they're the only ones you're dealing with. You ain't letting nobody else hit that. Every time this man sleeps with you, um, there's this magnetic force um, that causes you to be so drawn to him. And it's something about we really, the more you realize you can't have something, the more you desire it. Like me learning now, I'm a pre-diabetic. I've never craved chocolate more. I've never craved sweets more than anything. It's because I know I'm really not supposed to have it. <laughs> okay. I'm sure a lot of y'all out there got some things that you know your ass is not supposed to have, but you be doing it anyway. 
You know, you know you're not supposed to drink, so you really be wanting some wine. You want more wine now than ever before, you know? So, um, your desire for something increases when you really realize you're not supposed to have it. And I believe that's exactly what happened with Carla. The closer and closer it got to Kian having his baby, um, the stronger her feelings for him kept acceler accelerating. Not only that, like I said, um, she was aware of the situation, but Keon, like a lot of these niggas, she allowed him not only to get in between her legs, but she also allowed him to get in her head. No telling how many lies, cause you know how they do. You know I love my I love my fiance. I mean she cool and everything, but you know I realize you know I don't feel for her like I feel for you. You know um, I've been spending so much time with you, and I really realize how much you really care for me, and I'm realizing how much I really care for you, and I could really see myself being with a woman like you. I can really see myself you know building the future. I can see us having something together. You know, um, even though she is going to be the mother of my child, but I don't feel for her the way I feel for you. And as a woman, if you don't read in between the lines, you would get bamboozled. And I've learned that sometimes you have to really read in between the lines when men say certain stuff. Like, for instance, if a man says, I can see myself being with a woman like you, it does not mean he can really see himself being with a woman like you. That meaning, no, let me take that back. If a man says, I could see myself being with a woman like you, that's just what he's sitting. That's exactly what he means. He said he can see himself. Not that he will be with a woman like you or he wants to be with a woman like you. He can just see himself being with a woman like you. Meaning, that's not something he really wants. But he can see the potential of it. If a man says, you're a good woman. Um, and... um. I know we could have something together. That's all it is. He just sees you as a good woman and he feels y'all can have something together. It does not mean he really wants y'all to have something together. It's crazy, but these men, most of, some of them for the most part are habitual liars. They will sit there and get your hopes up high. They will tell you all the wonderful things they see in you, but it does not mean they want to be with you. Okay? They can tell you you're a pretty woman. They can tell you an attractive woman. They can tell you you're a smart woman. They'll even tell you how they appreciate the fact that you're business-minded. They like how dedicated you are. They can like so much shit about you and don't even want you. Now, it's not as far as relationship-wise. I've had men, before I got married, tell me I'm attractive, but I had to read in between the lines. That's all they perceived me as an attractive woman. Nothing else came behind that. I didn't hear them say someone I would like to marry. Someone I would marry. Someone I would be with. Sometimes, ladies, you got to take it for what it is. If a man says you're a nice girl or a pretty woman, that's all he means. Don't run with that narrative and think that y'all can ride off into the sunset and be together for a lifetime. You got to read in between the lines. But sometimes you want, so, you want a man so badly... Any little thing he says, you run with it, you gravitate towards it, and you set yourself up for detrimental pain because you make it deeper than what it really is. You got to learn to read in between the lines. You got to understand man language. Men speak different from us, okay? So, um, Carla had been dealing with Keon for a substantial amount of time. They had been going to bed together repeatedly. He's been everywhere with this woman, and the worst thing he could have ever done was he allowed this woman in his personal domain, his home. How disrespectful could you be? All it was was Keon was a little nigga with a big ego, okay? If you put in Keon Pittman, you see a lot of his pictures, he's not even that fine, okay? He's a little leprechaun. Little dude, you kind of, kind of remind me of that Martin Lawrence a little bit from back in the day. Short, cocky, kind of, you know, bigoty type, egotistical. That's the kind of vibe I got from him. Even if you watch the documentary and you see him in court, it's like this, I think I'm the shit type of demeanor. You know what I mean? You know, I can't, a short nigga with a big ego, Tori Lenez, but <laughs> that's another story. 
Um, it's always them leprechaun guys that got the biggest ego. You know, little lucky charm nigga. You know what I mean? Um, Keon, like the psychologist said in the documentary, he had a gift for gab. You got some guys who know they're not that fine, fine, like, 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 you know what I mean? They're not that kind of, um, who could I think of that's fine? They're not like Morris Chestnut fine, you know? Um, so how they compensate for that is that, um, they are really witty. They are really funny. Um, men who know they're not gifted in certain areas, they learn how to overly compensate for that in other areas. Like you may have a man that's not that great in bed but he knows how to spend all that goddamn money or you have one um who, who doesn't spend that have that much money but he knows how to be great in bed i mean they know how to compensate for where they are lacking and kenyon was one of those short leprechaun egotistical dudes um who knew he wasn't that fine like that but he knew how to you know put some sauce on his swag he probably knew how to dress up a little bit because you have some leprechaun dudes they know how to be well dressed because think about it their shoes are not that big so they can buy the nicest outfits and stuff because they, they their clothes are small Keon looks like he probably fits a medium in a shirt uh probably a, a, a size what 20 and 25 and pants or something no a little leprechaun negro you know what I mean? So he probably was well dressed, wore nice shoes, and from my understanding, um, from stories I read, he was really funny. He was very comical. Um, he was a little comedian, and you know, a lot of these, some of these guys, they know how to get you real good with them jokes. They know how to be funny. You know, that's how my husband was. He, you know, he still is. He knows how to get me with jokes. He knows how to be a class clown. Some of the guys, they, they just have that personality, and um. Kenyon is not fine fine you know like that but he had a little swag you know and the fact that Carla was already lonely and and she's had a bad history of supposedly supposed to she was once upon a time supposed to get married to a guy who she got pregnant from and he bailed out on her and left her so ever since then Carla has been looking for that 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 um was that that uh i know the word i'm trying to say she's she's been seeking you know that type of love you know what i mean um it's a word for it but it'll come to me later but carla's been seeking that since she was deprived of it you know she was a hopeless romantic basically seeking for that opportunity to find love again and you have some of us as women, we go through that one bad hump and we just never recover. It's always that one dude who you really, really dropped hard for, who really shattered you and you never got past it. That one dude who you, who you would never give a chance in a thousand years, but he finally found a way to win you over. You gave him a chance and he shitted you. You know, um, we all have that one hump that we can't get over. And I think Carla never got past her child's father um deciding not to go through with the wedding and leaving her to be a single mother she never got past it even with her beauty her success and she was a teacher making money doing well that never really uh that never healed she never healed from that she never became whole from that so the moment mr keon mr leprechaun um started giving her all this attention you know make a move you know it's always that one guy that you normally would probably never even go for but he just stays around you so much he, he likes to keep joking with you he likes to keep low key flirting with you he's calling you how you doing what you doing today can we have lunch he's just like this little goddamn mosquito that keeps pestering and bothering you to the point you end up finding yourself liking him you know that possibly could have happened or she was one of those women that just was so attention starved that the moment he started talking to her a little bit she just ran with it until it just got out of control you know what i mean and when once it led into an affair it just kept derailing she got more and more obsessive and infatuated with it so could be several factors behind it but um they had this ongoing affair for a long time and she knew what the deal was but Kenyon made her feel comfortable um as if his current relationship didn't really matter to him 
And a woman, uh, you put yourself in a, in a very sticky situation where you know a man is in a relationship and he's lying to you and telling you there's nothing with it. Like, he's making you believe there's no future in it for him. And you start to think that you're winning him over. You're thinking the more negatively he talks about his woman, that means the better chances of you winning him over. And a lot of the times it's just game. Dudes will sit up here and tell you everything their wife ain't doing, everything their fiance ain't doing. She ain't making me happy. She don't make me laugh like you. She always bitching. She always complaining. I feel like never what I do is never good enough. You know, or they just don't tell you nothing about them to the point that you feel like ain't nothing really there. You have some men, they don't discuss their fiancés at all. They don't discuss their wives at all. So you thinking you in there because he's not even bringing them up. And all the while, you have some men just that selfish and dogmatic to where um, they know how to keep the both of you separate from each other. They know how to make you feel like you're that girl um, by telling you everything his wife ain't doing or ain't doing or he's not telling you nothing about her. He's not even acknowledging her. You know what I'm saying? And he's going home to his wife, acting like everything is fine. Acting like he been at work all day when he just met you for lunch at goddamn Applebee's. And y'all went to the damn Marriott right across the street from Applebee's. You know what I mean? So, um, a lot of these men, very slick and clever. They know how to keep everybody at bay. The woman at home don't know no more of what's going on than the side chick does. Just lying to everybody. And yet you have the women that are angry with each other when it's the men who be lying. Having the best of both worlds. So anyway, so as it got as it uh as it got closer, because um Avis been wanting a child for a long time. You have to realize um she's been a child care um aid or provider. That's what she's always done for many years before she had her own child because she loves children. So, when she finally found out she was expecting, this was wonderful news to Keon and her. Meanwhile, Avis ain't suspecting that Keon is smashing Carla. Okay? So, they live in this American dream. Got the nice home. About to have a baby on the way. And what tends to happen is, with men, when they start feeling like the side chick is getting too aggressive, or she's getting too demanding or whatever... Now they want to drop the ball. That's what Keon did. The more Carla kept smothering him, kept being clingy like a fabric softener sheet, he started pulling away from her. And, you know, that's very selfish to get a person attached to you. And once they start yearning for your presence even more, now you're starting to get bothered. Now you're starting to feel like, you know, they're turning up the pressure on you. So that's what happened. Um, you know, he wanted to pull away, and in fact, one time he did. He actually, Keon actually did leave Carla alone for a while. Once he started seeing the pressure was heating up, he left. He let her alone. He left her alone for a while. Um, and in the midst of that. She tried him one more time just to see if Keon was really officially done or if he was selling wolf tickets. So she called him up, probably like, hey, what's up, babe? I know it's been a while since we talked and, you know, I just want to know what you was doing and, you know, we can just like see each other one more time. You know, I know you can't be with me as much as you used to be. Now that you got the situation going on, but I would really like to see you. Him being a dummy that he is, thinking with his dick, using the head downstairs like most of them do, especially these little leprechaun Negroes. He took he took the bait. Uh, I don't know. Come on, baby. Now you know we ain't seen each other in a while. Ain't like I'ma see you anymore after this. Let's just get back up for old time's sakes, you know, just one time for the road. All right, all right, shorty, all right, I'm, I'm a, all right, what time you want to meet? Where we going to be at? 
neither did Keanu. That one last meeting is what made his fiance meet her maker. He got up with Carla one more time. Instead of leaving her alone, and she done got slowly healing and, 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 and getting used to him not being around, he went back one more time. And that's when all hell broke loose. He went back one more time and thought he was going to be able to drop Carla again like he's done before. And Carla said, hell nah. So what she did the next time, she made him think they was just going to see each other again. Only to bait him to go meet her somewhere so he's out of the jurisdiction so she can go to his house and plan to take the life of his fiance without him being nowhere near the scene. She set up the stage. I forgot the exact events as to how she did it, but that's what she did. She set up the stage and basically made sure that Keon was nowhere near when she went to go do what she did. And that's when the rest was history. She basically stalked the woman, wait till the woman, wait till Avis pulled up. And that's when she did what she did. And Keon did not know anything about it. He didn't know he had a, a deceased pregnant fiance laying in the garage in a pool full of blood the whole time until he got off from work. The whole story was crazy because when he got there and saw her lifeless, the first person he decided to call was Carla. I don't know what the hell he was thinking. <laughs> I don't know what he was thinking. I don't know if he was panicking. So, sometimes men do the dumbest shit at the most serious times. I can't call it. And of course she acted like she had sympathy knowing about what happened with his fiance. So she, I guess she made it seem like she was going to meet him or see him or whatever. He ran over to a neighbor's house. Told the neighbors what happened. Neighbors caught the police. Coroner came and all of that and everything. So, of course, he's being questioned by the investigators. Because whenever it comes to investigations, the first thing they look at is the spouse. The cl person's closest next to the victim. And most cases is spouses is family. That's what detectives do. They work their way from the inside on out. I was a correctional off. I was a corrections officer for two years, so I'm used to all of how the law and everything does things as far as procedure wise. So, nevertheless, um, of course, as the investigation continued to unfold, um, it was brought to their attention that. Keon had been having an affair with Carla, so they had Carla come in. Of course, she tried to deny it and play crazy. And the more they kept turning the heat and the pressure up, she couldn't keep lying. The lies, you know, kept adding up. When you tell one lie, you got to cover a lot. You got to tell another lie to cover that lie, cover that lie. After a while, you just forget what the hell. You know what I mean? So stuff wasn't adding up. But anyway, um, she ended up admitting to it, and they went to trial. And can you imagine... Um, the animosity. Carla's family was there. Keon's family was there. And most importantly, Avis, the victim, who did not deserve this over a selfish Negro who did not have any dick discipline. Her family was there. So I could only imagine the anger and the animosity they held towards him as much as they definitely had towards Carla. And they did ask him on a stand, and he um, admitted in but so many ways that he know it was pretty much his fault why everything happened the way it did. Now keep in mind, there's another case that happened similar to this, and I'm going to I'm going to do the series on her, unhinged, um, sometime next week. There was a police officer who was having an affair with a dispatcher, and the same stuff, same exact thing happened. She ended up murdering his significant other. But that's going to be for another series. And I'm, I'm doing this series because I want all women to understand. 
what can happen on both sides of the spectrum as the side chick or as the main chick okay so anyway so he admitted and i can imagine why he's admitting this hi carlos family oh this is my chair so um my um my um 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 whatever you call them chairs with the wheels on it i need to put some wd-40 oil or something it'd be squeaking like crazy but anyway um I can imagine how they felt during the testimony. Hearing this Negro say that this was his fault and the family was looking forward to Avis having her first child. All this over some free booty. Okay? Free booty. And he thought he was going to continue to keep getting over, have the best of both worlds. And I hate to say it, and I don't say this with bragging rights, but Carla showed him he got way more than what the hell were you bargaining for. And right now, as we speak, there's a man somewhere dealing with another female going home to his wife paying the bills washing his dick off with irish spring soap climbing the bed with his wife like he ain't just smash big booty um becky you know what i'm saying at the goddamn marriott and he's thinking he's getting over not realizing that he is getting ready to create some havoc that's going to cost him his marriage and in the worst case scenario, his life or his wife life. Because a lot, a lot of these side chicks, they have a lot of issues. And we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about that. Okay? So, nevertheless, after all the evidence and everything, you know, they found her guilty and basically let her know that she was never getting out of jail. Prison. I mean, prison. Prison. She was never getting out of prison. Um, and right at that moment, she knew she had royally effed up. She knew she had royally effed up. Keep in mind, she had a son, one son, who she lost. She didn't even think about her child, how he would be affected. Well, you took somebody else, you took a mother away from her child, so guess what? You reap what you sow, dear. You can't be a mother to your son. And the thing is, you're living and you know you can't. At least Avis is resting in heaven, where every father and her children, I mean, and her firstborn, even though you took them from this earth, but she ain't got to suffer with it like you all. She's with her baby. You can't be with yours when he has his first wedding. He has his first grandchild. You're going to miss all those precious moments over a leprechaun nigga who didn't respect his marriage and he damn, well, his relationship, and he damn sure didn't respect you. And this is where it is. People are so busy getting off busting nuts, climaxing, coming. When you get past all the moaning and groaning and you got to deal with the reality of my life is over all over a man who did not want me the way i wanted him and i could only imagine her hearing his testimony when he said it was all about sex for me you talk about a double air sword you know took the man fiance and his child and he still turned around to tell you now in her mind her getting rid of this woman i guess she thought that meant her and keon would be together when I when I say there was a whole lot psycho psychologically wrong with Carla before she got deeply romantically involved with this man, and that's the problem with a lot of these men out here. They so busy looking at a woman's looks and her ass and her titties, they not looking at her 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 mindset. There, there, some you got a lot of women out here that are off, that are crazy, that are narcissistic, that are very troubled. You got women who have been abandoned, women who have been molested, and they are angry with men, and all it takes is for one man to fail them. And they jump way to the deep end, you feel me? He picked him up something that was way more than he could ever imagine it to be. He came home. Okay, yeah, his fiance was five months pregnant, y'all. I think I'm, I, I, I don't know if I told you how many months she was. 
he came in that garage and saw her laying in a, a pool of blood. Ran to his neighbor's house. In shock. Avis was only 27, y'all. She did not even really begin her life right. She was, it makes it so bad. She was doing the right thing. She was being a fiance, preparing for motherhood. She ain't do shit. But when it boiled down to it, she was the one who got hit. All because a, a, a man was reckless with his dick. Sad situation. Now, let me go into the deep details of this. And I almost left it out. Um... Her autopsy showed, let me tell you how much anger and rage Carla had. Avis had been shot four times, stabbed three times, and slashed across her throat once. Three and four of the got three out of the four gunshot wounds were fatal. She had one shot, oh my goodness through her left buttock and abdomen. One went into her lower left chest wall and into her lung, and one went through the back of her head behind her left ear. The shot through her head was made close as evidenced by Potter burns on her skin. The bullets looked to have come from a .38 caliber weapon, just like um, the one Carla brought from her uncle, brother, whoever. The, the unborn son, so he was going to have his first boy. So he lost majorly too. Died as a result of maternal demise. Both deaths was, was classified as homicides. So she got charged twice because she took lives. Anytime you take a pregnant woman and you murk them, <laughs> trying to be careful with the words I use, um, you're going to get charged for two lives. Once that baby has a heartbeat, you're going to be charged for two lives. Bottom line. And that's what happened. Um, for her to go that far, that's how much anger and rage was in Carla. She was so angry with Carla. And that's what happens to a lot of these side chicks. We see Arianne Curry. Any of all my, my, my um love and marriage of Huntsville fans out here, who knows? I got to save that for a whole nother day, y'all. Because I ain't going to talk about Arianne too much on this shit here because I'll go a whole nother hour. But we're going to get on talking about her. We're going to talk about these, you know, um, 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 you know, uh, uh, bobblehead ass side chicks. Because she's definitely number one on the hit list. She was so angry with him. And what happens is a lot of times women, we want to be heard, especially when a man is tearing us down, he's breaking us down and you're, you've expressed your hurt, your anger, and he acts like it has not registered. You told him, I wish you would stop playing with me. You made me think we were going to have something, you know, you don't purge, you don't Put your, pour your heart on the table letting this man know how you care about him only for him to still be on some fuck boy fuckery of I'ma still do what I'm gonna do I still wanna be with my woman I know you feeling me but I ain't feeling you like that it is a disgrace it, it's, it's a slap in the face so Carla felt like she wasn't being heard Or she just felt like the only way Keon is going to leave this woman, I'm going to have to take this woman from him. And this is what happens. Some of these side chicks like Ariane Curry with Mel, they become so asphyxiated on the wife, on the woman that the man they still desire, who yet still desires their wives or their baby mamas, their fiance. It's hard when you want a man so bad, but he really wants another woman better than you want him. So what tends to happen is the woman becomes angry and she takes it out on the thing that she knows, not thing, 
the person she knows that he wants more than her. Carla was mad with Avis because Keon still wanted Avis and the mother of his child. She could not compete with that. Avis had two things going that she didn't have. She had Keon and she was having Keon's child. She didn't have those two things. And anytime you're dealing with a psychotic appetizer, a psychotic side chick, There's a lot of misplaced anger. They're angry with you because of the man's actions. For whatever reason, in their dysfunctional, malfunctional mind, if I get rid of her, then he'll have no choice but to want me. The irony. Because... You just mean you're going to make this man want you by any means necessary. And pretty much, um, like I said, it's, 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 a, it's, it's a different toilet, but the same shit. That's what Betty Broderick and, and, and Clara Harris, they just thought. They was going to be able to shut down how these men feel about the, about the other woman and make that man be with them. And let me tell you something, ladies. Once a man that made up in his mind that he don't want you, you going to hurt yourself trying to force him or convince him that he should want you and only you. The proof is in the pudding. The fact that he's lying to you to go be with that person, the fact that you know, I don't want to confuse y'all. Let's leave Betty Broderick in, Carly Hughes, just because they were the women who took their own husbands. I don't want to confuse nobody. Back to the side chicks. I knew which direction I was going, but I think I don't I don't want, want to confuse anyone. The fact that Carla was determined that she was going to make Keon want her one way or the other. So what better way to do it than to eliminate the competition? Not understanding, realistically, the law is going to get involved. You think, what, what, what she thought? She thought she was going to be able to hurt this woman, take her life, along with her child. And what she thought, her and Keon was going to move in, move in the house together and... and and possibly have a child of their own. I, I don't know her psyche, what she was thinking. But what it is, she didn't think about the future. She didn't think about the consequences. She became, she was so in love or digmatized because lust will make you feel like you're in love. Good dick will make you feel like you're in love, y'all. Now, nah, I ain't going to lie. Good dick will make you feel like you have found the one, okay? Whatever the case was. She became so obsessed with him. She she had tunnel vision. She looked one way and one direction only. She didn't look left. She didn't look right. Like, okay, if I do this, I'm going to lose my child. I'm going to lose my freedom. He's still going to move on and be with her, if not her. I mean, he's still going to move on and meet someone, even if I take her life. This is stuff you got to think about when you have one of those heat of the moment. I, I cannot kid you not. I've been in situations not where I mess with somebody's husband. But a man pissed me off so bad. I said, Lord, I, I, I had to see. I had to look at the future like. I'm going to be in prison. Having to share a, a cell with multiple other females. And I don't even like females like that. I'm going to be away from my mama. Be away from my family. I'm not going to get my Starbucks no more. You know, I'm thinking about all kinds of stuff. But it's not to say that I'm so invincible that I couldn't have snapped. It could happen to any of us. And it still could. And you do have to keep common sense, even under pressure. Even when you catch a nigga in the act. Even when you know he lying to you. Um, you'll look back on your life. If you think about any men you've been with in your past that you could have lost your mind for, I'm sure you're so glad you didn't. 
Thought you would never heal from it, but you did. Thought you'd never get past it, but you did. Now, imagine at that point in time you took his life, where you would have been now. What you would have missed out on, the blessings that you would have lost. Carla didn't think about any of that. She got dignitized. But reality dawned on her when she ended up having to go to prison. That's why she kept trying to appeal it. Prison ain't fun. This ain't what I wanted here. I'm away from my son. My son's getting bigger. He's probably having children now. My, fa my family, my mama, my daddy, uh, they're getting older. I can't stop and visit them no more. I can only do phone calls. Because sometimes they put you in prison so far away, your family can't just up and come and see you anytime they want. Especially when you got them long sentences like that. Unless your family plan on moving where you're going to be at. But most of the time, people can't afford to do that. Carla, uh, uh, Carla, the fact that Carla tried to peel it all those times is letting me know she already realized she made a fatal mistake. She she can't even handle it. And the movie uh, Thin Line Between Love and Hate, One Night of Passion can cause a lifetime, of pa a lifetime of pain. And that is the truth. And and the insult injury, he still end up remarried. And ladies, I heard he's remarried to a white woman. Okay, sit down, hallelujah on that. Now, has he got children? I'm going to look that up. I'm going to see if he has children. But I know he's remarried. And they actually sent the marriage certificate to her while she's in prison. Honey, I can't. These men are so full of shit. <laughs> but see, that's her karma. Because she took an innocent woman life who had nothing to do with her and Keon. So this is where it's at. This is where this is what it's come to. Um, make it so bad. Both of them was very pretty women. Carla was a pretty woman, and so was Avis. And Keon thought he was the goddamn macaroni. Macaroni, of the, the Mac of the year, macaroni. Mr. Macaroni himself. He thought he really had it going on. Because he had these two beautiful women who wanted a future with him. And some some of these leprechaun dudes that ain't used to getting attention from women a lot, when they do luck up and get women who really into them, they start thinking they the shit. They start thinking they grand. They start acting like they had it like that all along. It just amazes me how some of these guys start smelling their goddamn selves. Knowing they ain't always had it like that. You didn't always have pretty women checking for you. He thought he had it going on. Or I could go smash this honey dip over here anytime I want. And I still go home to my beautiful pregnant fiance and build a future with her. His ego got the best of him. And he had, he had to wear that weight on his shoulders of Avis's family forever resenting him. He had to, he had to carry that weight on his shoulder. And he deserved it. And the crazy part was, both of these women had two similar backgrounds. Both of them was beautiful. Both of them was highly educated. These wasn't no, no, no project like ratchet chicks, you know. They both was decent. I mean, Carla wasn't one of those women who'd been in, in, in and out of jail for having this type of history of behavior. She just got dignitized and fell for the wrong man who she allowed to mentally and emotionally poison her. To the point it drove her over the edge because he kept lying, making promises. Or maybe he told her, I can't be with you like that. And she just kept entertaining it, thinking that she was going to get him to change his mind eventually. And women have been known to do this. She's been trying to appeal over and over and over. And you know, I can imagine what her family had to go through because every time these criminals try to appeal you get a notice coming to your house let you know yeah they tried to appeal um they got a court date coming up and it's like it, it reopens a can of worms all over again you got to rebuild reheal all over again so i'm sure every time avis's parents got 
notification so did Keon because everybody that's involved in the situation they got to notify them they got to notify the victim and the victim's people so I'm sure every time they saw a letter like this bitch the audacity you took my child's life and you still fighting to get out of there but I tell you one thing it did not work Some, in most cases the shit you do you got to live with it in life sometimes there are no do overs there's just no do overs you, you are stuck with the choices that you make and, and you can't all of a sudden you realize you done bit off more than you could chew you don't want to have the, the answer to it she's never getting out of prison so with that being said getting down to the steak and potatoes um, what drives what are the factors that cause these women to get to this point um i know one of the things are is that um they have invested so much you know um you got to be careful investing in somebody else's investment <laughs> it's like this you got your when you can have your own bank account you sit up there give somebody else money and they putting it in their account who's benefiting from it it's the person who bank account is actually getting the money not you even though you're putting the money in there versus when you could have got your own bank account and put your own money in there that way you could benefit from it um this is the game this is a dangerous game that a lot of side chicks play um they invest in somebody else's man and you feel double shitted because not only have you invested but in your mind you also feel like the other woman is going to reap the benefits of all of what you put in to the man you was dealing with say you might have bought him some nice clothes bought him some nice shoes hell he wearing it out with his wife he wearing it out to dinner with his fiance you might have taught him some special tricks in the bedroom that he probably using on the wife and the fiance. And the main thing, you done invested your emotions. And he done took all your emotions and he's still putting all of his um, energy into his relationship. That's what drives a lot of women to the edge. Because they're looking at everything I invested. Um, the other woman is still women. Woman is still winning. Which brings me to my next point. Um, what drives a shy chick over the edge is the fact that no matter how many times she has slept continuously with this man, it wasn't enough to make him undesire his wife or his fiance. I don't know what it is, women, where we, where we think we got the power with the coochie. We think the power is between our legs. We really think that what we have between our legs is so magical that if, if we just keep letting the man get it, that eventually we're going to break him in and break him down. And it never happens. And every time you think you're getting close, every climax, every every nut he busses, every time he moans and groans your name, you think you are, you're, you, you're, you're arriving to that destination only to find out he will, he will, he will bust nuts and all of that and still not want you in the same ways that you want him because he got to realize for men sex is sex men can separate the two a man can screw you multiple times not be in love not want you not care about you hell you could be unattractive and a man will screw you multiple times men know how to separate their penis from they uh from from from, from their um from their personal don't you know it's so bad a man can hold you and, and, and hold good conversations with you and have an intimate conversation and not feel nothing? Do you not know a man can sit up there and encourage you and tell you baby is going to be okay and give you all this confidence and it not mean nothing? Nine times out of ten, that's what Keon was doing. He had her head like gassed. And a lot of these guys are professional manipulators. They will sit up there and encourage you, be your friend, 
hold you at night, talk to you when you need a shoulder to cry on, and it not mean nothing. It's all game. And if you're that weak or that thirsty, um, you will take all of these little things that they do and try to make it bigger than what it is and convince yourself that he's really in love with you. You got some men that are just professional manipulators. Your mama died, your daddy died, come to the funeral and everything and still don't want to be with you. It's really sad how a lot of these dudes out here move, but that's how they moving. Um, what drove Carla who just to the edge was, you know, um, you know, she really realized she could not stop that man, Kenyon, from want, wanting Avis. No matter how much time they spent together, he was always going back home to her. Holidays, birthdays, and it's even worse so now that we have social media. These women will go on these men pages and stalk them and see they're taking their wife out on the cruise, the dinner, and it infuriates him. Kind of like the movie, um, Tyler Perry movie, uh, the name of it, what, um, I got to type it in and look for it because I don't forget. I know it start with an A or something. Acrimony. Women become obsessed with that, you know. Obsessed with um a man getting over them. You can become so infatuated with that. That you really start to um lose your sanity. Not only that, uh, Carla wasn't seeing anybody else. You know, um, you should always have other options. And the bad part is some of these men are selfish. They don't want you, but then they don't want you dealing with somebody else. If they even feel like you're talking to a dude, why is you talking to him? What you dealing with him for? You have some men that are just that damn conniving. I mean, if you got a wife at home and you're going to do you and all of that, let me do me. But you got some just that selfish. They don't want you doing you. They want to do you. And still do them. <laughs> the irony. The irony, y'all. But anyway, I've gone over an hour. I'm going to get ready to go shut this down and everything. But uh, we're going to do some more unhinged series. And um, we're going to be breaking down different elements. What causes these women to get driven over to the edge. Um, keep in mind, Carla was rejected and abandoned by her child's father um a lot of these men ain't understanding a lot of these women got childhood issues um like Ariane curry her mother was a side chick she's witnessed her mother dealing with married men that's why she felt so comfortable dealing with martel a lot of these women had dysfunctional childhoods they did not come up in in in, in healthy family conditions They've been exposed to a lot of dysfunctional situations and they have learned to normalize it. Um, Carla's issue on the other hand, uh, her one shining armor, well, her knight in shining armor abandoned her. He didn't come through with the wedding and he left her to be a single mother. She never got past that. And she thought for once she was going to land something when she met Kenyon. The only discover he did the same exact thing. And sometimes as a woman, when you keep attracting the same type of dudes that keep shitting on you, a light bulb got to go off in your head. What am I doing to keep attracting these no good ass dudes? Am I going to bed with them too quick? Am I giving them too much? Something you're doing wrong. You can't keep picking up bum ass dudes and it's only them. Okay? But we're going to shut it down, y'all, because we don't we done went over about an hour. You know, we're going to save the rest for next time. So anyway, y'all, please make sure you like, you share, you subscribe to the video. Um, we're going to do some series called Unhinged. We're going to be talking about the different women that have lost not only their minds, but lost their freedom over being dickmatized, okay, over not dick-toxing from a certain man who has 
um, brought nothing but pain and agony to them. So we're going to be doing some series on these. Um, if y'all know any other stories that are similar to this, um, email me. Let me know. Don't put it in the comment section because um, I don't always look at my comment sections like I do my email. If you know similar stories that will be an asset to Unhinged, I don't care how old or new it is, please submit the information so I can also make a part of the Unhinged series. So anyway, ladies, y'all have a wonderful weekend and a happy new year. It is your girl, your diva and knowledge, Lady Mocha. Represent Mocha's Ladies Lounge. And y'all have a wonderful day. And until then, see you next year. God willing, be blessed.